Over the years, we've taken on the Germans twice and beaten them. We've beaten the Spanish, the French, the Zulus. I mean, pretty well everyone. We are unstoppable. Unless we encounter a bit of snow, then we're stumped. In the olden days, we used to have proper winters. Even tall people were buried and whole towns disappeared. But we battled the elements with our black and white lorries and our steely resolve. Now, though, we're told to stay at home every time the wind gets a bit brisk. Good evening and welcome to Northwest Tonight. Winter hit the region with a vengeance today. Some people seem to be panicking a bit. There are reports of shoppers clearing shelves of flasks, duvets and gloves. British Gas is warning there could be thousands of emergency calls in the coming days. Honestly, the way they were going on back in January, you would have thought it was time to build an ark. Batten down the hatches and wrap up warm because Arctic weather's on the way. If journeys are not necessary, then people shouldn't travel. Make sure you've got some warm clothes with you. And what did we get after all their warnings? This. Not exactly Alaska, is it? Still, it provided us with an ideal opportunity to test a new estate version of Jaguar's X-Type. So why is an estate car so important in the snow? Well, in the olden days, they used to let you go out there with nothing more than a jumper and a shovel. But these days, the health and safety people say you need rather more than that if you're going to deal with these treacherous conditions. They say that you should take a tow rope, obviously, uh, a rag to tie to your aerial in case you get covered by a drift, a torch, some warm clothing, um, carpet to put under the tyres if you get uh, stuck, uh, a mobile phone charger, first aid kit, obviously. Plenty of water. Good. Um, um, that's what they say, but I think you'd probably go further without being stupid. Um, Andy McNabb, for instance, he'd be a good idea. It doesn't have to be Andy McNabb himself. Anyone from the, uh, from the SAS will do. Anyone with a knowledge of how to build a rudimentary shelter and uh, drink their own wee. Ray Mears, he'd do. Um, thermos, stove for cooking, uh, some kindling. Food, I've got a lot. Soup, curry, chocolate. I think some skis would be a good plan. Spare fuel. Sorry, mate. Put the shovel on you. And the hip flask. So, with a pile that size, it's a good job that the X-Type estate has a bigger boot than the BMW 3 Series estate, the Audi A4 estate, and the Mercedes C-Class estate. Underneath, the X-Type is actually a Ford Mondeo. But don't let that put you off. Genetically, you are 98% identical to a halibut. But it's the 2% that makes the difference. And it's the same story in here. Got all this wood and leather and equipment. It feels very Jaguar-ish. Prices start at a very un-Jaguar-ish £21,000, but for that you'd get a small engine or a diesel and front-wheel drive. This version, however, costs £26,000, and that's because it has a two-and-a-half-litre V6 and, more importantly, four-wheel drive. Now, we know that when the weather's like this, four-wheel drive works well on big off-roaders with their chunky tyres. And we know that ordinary cars don't work at all. So, where does the Jag fit in? The thing is, this is an ordinary car with ordinary road tyres. Just happens to have four-wheel drive. So, how does this one cope? Well, the simple answer is, very well. It didn't get stuck once, all day. It laughed in the face of the weatherman and the police and the AA with their advice to stay at home. And I'm not surprised by this. Once, many, many, many years ago, I actually drove an X-Type saloon down a ski slope. And coming up now is some footage of it. The 
Jag may have a very rudimentary four-wheel drive system. There are no torque-sensing diffs and no active yaw control. It doesn't even have particularly high ground clearance. It's just a car. But even so, I made it down the mountain. We know it works on snow and ice, but better still, it keeps on working on roads like this, roads that have been gritted. If I were to drive down here in a BMW 3 Series estate with rear-wheel drive, I'd need a nappy. But in this, I feel relaxed. And none of those heart-stopping moments where the wheels hit the slush, you know, when it all, all suddenly goes twitchy. It doesn't, it just tracks straight and true. Honestly, I could be driving along this road at nearly 60 miles an hour, doing a little light embroidery to pass the time. In the advertisements for this car, Jaguar suggests it would be an ideal tool for your family skiing holiday. But if you have one of these, you don't need to go to the Alps. Eat your heart out, Val d'Isere, and welcome to Val de Chipping Norton. This is the best ski lift I've ever been on. Morning. You well? You well? Yeah, no, I'm having a good day. And this is the great thing, you see, is I can adjust the speed of my lift by shouting at the driver. Faster! Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. OK, that'll do. Thank you. Nice speed. OK, and stop. J'arrive at the top. Now, ski back down again. No poles, but hey. I need a bit more gravity. 